Welcome. Good evening. This is uh, Kirk Fontaine, and welcome to the, the Straight to the Bar Gym Chats, episode 202. Uh, tonight, uh, I'd like to reintroduce Josh Hewitt, who is a certified personal trainer and strength coach. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, you're the owner of TopFormFitness.com? That's correct. Okay. Welcome back, Josh. Uh, just to give a little uh, summary, give us a little bit about your background, how you got inspired in the field of uh, strength coach and uh, personal training. Okay, well, I think my story is similar to a lot of guys. Um, when I was a teenager, I was a pretty skinny kid, so I started training to put a little bit of muscle on, um, so to make up for that, and uh, that soon turned into like my passion, and I started learning as much as I could about strength training and nutrition, uh, and it became my lifestyle. Um, so I turned that into a career uh, by getting my personal training certification, and then later went to university um, to get a degree in kinesiology. Now, along the way, uh, I got into uh, strength training and competitive strength athletics. So uh, I got a little uh, picture here of when I first uh, started getting into strength training or com uh, strongman competitions. And here I'm a little over 250 pounds. Uh, this is back at All Strength Challenge. I don't know if you remember when those are on the Outdoor Life Network. Um, and yeah. I was uh, I was competing at Wasega Beach in this one, and then shortly thereafter went on to compete in uh, Ontario's Strongest Man. Now, I only placed eighth in that contest, but still, for being one of the smaller guys, I was pleased with that. Of course, the field has uh, become much more competitive now. Um, so uh, from there, I found that when I stopped getting into competing, and things were changing in my life. Like I say here, the one thing that's constant in life is change. And I found that um, as I uh, got older and uh, my lifestyle changed, like I got married, I was fortunate enough to meet a great woman and uh, get married and then uh, had a kid, uh, got a house, so I became a mortgage owner and my business got busier. Um, my, uh, my body uh, changed a little bit and that was... Uh, rather embarrassed. I, for some reason I was relatively unaware of how out of shape I got until I was looking back on some pictures from uh, from our vacation uh, just shortly after my okay. daughter was born and uh, I realized I had okay. to do something. So this is, uh, this is less than a year ago um, and I took it uh, upon myself to learn as much as I could about physique transformation and I was uh, my main thing was to look at unconventional approaches so think outside the box and um, one thing I found is the more I learned and the more I studied it seemed that a lot of the mainstream approaches to fitness and conditioning and exercise and nutrition were sort of focused more on making money rather than getting results so I knew I had to look okay. elsewhere and sort of uh, think a little outside the box <clears throat> I've one thing I found along the way is that if you're just trying to um, meet the norms or follow the mainstream, then you're going to look like everyone else. If you want to start to make changes in your body and stand out, then you have to look outside and, and find some unique approaches. And that's sort of what I want to get into tonight. Okay. Okay. Uh, did you want to touch upon the hormonal optimization and then uh, lead into the uh, the IF? Sure. Uh, um, so let me see. I have some notes on that as well. Um, so for hormonal optimization, <clears throat> first of all, we want to look at what are different factors affecting body composition. And now I'm focusing this mostly on, on body composition or physique transformation. So that is, uh, it, it, this definitely does relate to, to strength and performance, but uh, just for the sake of this discussion, I'm going to be focusing on, uh, on physique on body, body composition, gaining lean tissue and losing body fat. Um, so some factors that affect your body composition are obviously uh, your age. Um, now I'm in my early 40s and uh, I, I mean I definitely notice hormonal changes that uh, lead to changes in body composition. Uh, your sex obviously women tend to have a little bit higher uh, body fat percentage. Um, genetics do play a small role obviously. Um, I, th In my opinion and this is a, a you know a, a debatable topic 
Uh, the factors that you can control, I believe, have a stronger, play a stronger role than the factors that you can't, than your genetics. Um, and I suggest that people, I won't get into it tonight, but uh, research a field of uh, genetics called epigenetics. And it basically suggests that our environment, like uh, our food and the chemicals we put in our body, our activity, and even our mood or thoughts or how we perceive our environment uh, can play a role on genetic expression. So uh, it's a pretty cool field that suggests, uh, hey, even... Uh, even what you eat and what you do can affect what genes express themselves. So you can't really play the victim role like, oh, my genetics is making me fat or whatever. So aside from a very, very right. small percentage of people with genetic mutations, uh, obviously your nutrition habits, mm -hmm. um, activity and exercise, and the type of exercise you choose, uh, your sleep and recovery, uh, that's my weak point right there. Um, and then lifestyle and stress factors obviously play a role. And what I want to get into tonight is uh, a little bit about hormones. Um, you know, there's been a lot of uh, debates along, uh, along the way of, as far as what plays a stronger role in uh, body composition. Um, is it hormones or is it energy balance? And sort of the, the argument for energy balance won out uh, along the way, saying, you know, it's mostly calories in versus calories out. Um, but there's still... Um, a strong following or a group of people that are arguing that the the type of calories you take in has an effect on your metabolism and your hormones and that's an important factor as well okay so uh, the main the first one I want to talk about is insulin um, and I call insulin the storage hormone um, because basically when you consume foods especially carbohydrate foods insulin is increased in your blood and helps you store the, that uh, those calories of those carbohydrates in both um, liver, fat, and muscle. Uh, okay. It is an anabolic hormone, um, but it's also a, 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 you know, a fat storage hormone. Okay. Um, and ways to control this hormone, because if we want to stay lean, we have to, to, uh, to harness it, to control it, uh, is to uh, reduce your total carbohydrate intake, consume mostly low glycemic index carbs, and obviously perform a form of strength training exercise, which helps improve insulin sensitivity. Uh, and this is just a quick little example for those watching as far as uh, low glycemic or slow carbs and higher glycemic uh, carbohydrates, which are okay. called the deadly whites. Um, so another one, just touch on briefly, as cortisol. I call that the stress hormone. Okay. Um, that's a catabolic hormone that breaks down tissue, and that's usually in response to stress or long duration endurance exercise. Any kind of exercise may have a, a, an effect on cortisol levels, but uh, especially long distance, long duration, slow steady state cardio can increase your cortisol production, especially if done in extremes. Um, now cortisol, because it breaks down tissue, it is catabolic. It will break down muscle tissue to release proteins in your, into your system. It will uh, release blood sugar into your system. Basically, it's releasing all the nutrients you need to survive. Okay. So this is something that we want to control. Again, I'm not saying to eliminate because all, all hormones have a role. Like uh, insulin, obviously, we need to store nutrients. Uh, cortisol is a, is, reduces inflammation. So it, it plays a role as well, right. um, but we want to to control these hormones or you know keep them in balance. Mm -hmm. um, so you got to reduce your stress, get better sleep, and, and uh, get better recovery, and avoid uh, long slow cardio, and in, instead uh, use uh, what I call uh, high intensity interval training, which has sort of become uh, a little more trendy now. But there's a reason for that. Um, okay. So definitely uh, short, higher intensity interval type cardio is is has more benefits than the long, slow duration. Okay. Uh, uh, thyroid hormones, there's a few different ones of thyroxin, T1 and 2, and uh, T3. I mean, uh, these are strongly related to your metabolism and body temperature. Um, now, one thing around this is if people are in an uh, extreme calorie deficit um, for too long of a time, that can decrease your thyroid hormone production. Your body will try to... This is when they, people talk about, oh, you're going in starvation mode and you're going to... Uh, you know, lower your metabolism. Uh, that's what they're talking about is your thyroid hormone production may decrease. Now, that, that doesn't happen like by the, you know, second day of a low calorie. This is talking about extreme low calorie and prolonged duration. But part of the way to overcome that if you are in a calorie deficit for a long period of time is include cheat days. So every week or two to include a, a day where you have a higher caloric intake or a heavy cheat meal can spike your thyroid hormone levels and, and help to... Yo. 
Yeah. I kind of lost you there for a minute. <laughs> oh, okay. 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 All right. So the 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 next one um, that was uh, should be of, of interest to those and, and Matt maybe you as well um, for strength development, increasing lean tissue, is um, testosterone. Uh, testosterone is responsible for all the manly characteristics, uh, deep in voice. Uh, I don't think we need to get explain that. Most people know what that you know, increasing strength, lean tissue, etc., aggressiveness, um, uh, hairiness, <laughs> and. Yeah. Um, so, uh, testosterone does naturally decline with age, um, so this is something that w through nutrition, exercise, and supplementation, you can have a positive effect on that. And obviously I'm talking about uh, naturally increasing your natural production of testosterone. Uh, taking exogenous sources or steroids, obviously it works, but it does have a, a potentially negative effect on your natural production and, and your hormonal balance. So, I mean. That's people's choice, but uh, I want to uh, get into what we can do to optimize our natural production, um, including uh, uh, high-intensity strength training, so um, including big compound multi-joint exercises, but reducing rest. So by doing antagonist supersets or strength circuits uh, has been shown to have a, a, an increase on testosterone production. Um, okay. Even if that's over the short term following a, a short, intense workout, uh, having those bursts of higher testosterone can be beneficial. Uh, consuming fats, including saturated fats. Your body needs to use uh, saturated fats to produce a lot of hormones. So a lot of these fat-reduced diets can have a negative effect on our anabolic hormone production. Yeah. So uh, including uh, healthy saturated fats. Even natural butter I'd recommend over margarine and uh, you know coconut oil and even some animal fats. Mm -hmm. um, keeping your body fat percentage down. I mean, they've shown that if you have a lot of abdominal fat, your conversion of testosterone to estrogen may be a little higher. Now, there is a lot of question around natural supplements. Um, a lot of people think that they're, that's all crap. Um, there are studies behind some of them. It seems like now, like uh, when I was researching this, it seems like everything will boost your testosterone nowadays. It's like the, you know, the newest herb or plant. I mean, you can go outside and eat dandelions, and all of a sudden you get a test boost, according right. to these studies, right? So you got to be skeptical about this stuff. But there are a couple of things that look somewhat promising. DAA, diaspartic acid, actually has a couple of legitimate human studies, and most of our other supplements are done in rats. Uh, studies done in rats. So. Um, DAA has shown uh, you know, a 40% increase or more on testosterone production, and it's natural and safe from all the studies that have been shown. Okay. Um, now, I've started using that myself, um, and what I did is uh, I've actually done bl taken blood work before. Uh, so it's been a couple weeks in. I'm going to be doing a blood work after a couple months, and I'm going to do my own little uh, research on myself. And there's a okay. lot of other factors associated, but I'm just going to, before I give a strong opinion on that, I'm going to test it out. Uh, Macuna Prienz is sort of a newer one, uh, not as well researched, but it's been shown to increase um, L-DOPA, uh, which can has a positive effect on growth hormone and testosterone. So that's one worth looking into and just researching. But vitamin D has so many health benefits, and it's also been shown to support healthy uh, hormone production. So right. I would definitely recommend everyone include vitamin D and probably higher than the recommended like government dosages. Right. Now, human growth hormone... Uh, as what I call the youth hormone, uh, and this is involved in recovery and uh, tissue regeneration and cell repair. Uh, it also helps you increase your fat metabolism. And basically, if you have higher levels of HGH in your body, you're going to look younger and feel younger and be leaner. Uh, now, there are certain types of exercise that will help stimulate that. Uh, one is, a, again, high-intensity interval training. Uh, has been shown to those short, intense bursts of exercise have a positive effect on, on your growth hormone production. Um, mm -hmm. Intense strength training exercises, again, with the right exercise selection, big compound multi-joint movements, training with the uh, correct intensity. Um, and they usually show if you keep the rest periods down, um, that has a greater effect. Now, obviously, that's dependent on your goals. Um, and then getting better sleep. So your growth hormone levels are the highest when you have an empty stomach, typically. So when you're sleeping during periods of deep sleep, you have higher levels of growth hormone. And that's going to tie us into the next topic, which is intermittent fasting. This is just okay. a, little, a little chart here that ties into uh, insulin uh, related to growth hormone. Um, that when your insulin levels go up from eating a lot of high carbohydrate or uh, sugary foods, 
that has a blunting effect on your growth hormone production, which will mm. decrease the release of growth hormone. So that's one more reason why you might want to control the levels of insulin in your blood, on your blood um, over the long term. Okay. So basically, that was a quick summary of, uh, of uh, all, all the hormones that typically relate to body composition uh, and what we can do to optimize them. And intermittent fasting is one of the uh, techniques that relates to uh, strong to growth hormone as well. Those are one of my favorites. This is a terrific glute exercise, and it gives you that little extra oomph behind your hip extension. This exercise is a great carryover for sexual positions such as the chair or the cowgirl. Give it a shot. Now my number two exercise is the push-up. Now I know this might seem pretty basic, but if you guys like being on top, don't underestimate the power of this exercise.